everybody, it's Janet and welcome to my channel. If you've not been here before, uh, I am a crafter and I love technology and tools. So one of the things you'll see on my channel a lot is demonstrations of how to use various cutting machines and their software. So I have three machines currently and show things from all of them at the moment. On the Cricut side, I have the Explore Air 2. I have the brand new Silhouette Cameo 4 that just came out in October. And I have an older Scan and Cut CM350. And so I use all these machines and try to help uh, my viewers with various ideas and tips and tricks. This video is just going to focus on Cricut Design Space, and I won't be talking at all about which machine you're using because none of these tips have anything to do with the machine. These are just general Design Space related tips. The version I'm using tonight is version 5.2.14, and this is the latest uh, beta version out there right now. And I'm recording this on December 17th, 2019. Now the reason it's beta is because they're moving the uh, Cricut system from being entirely in the cloud to being mostly on your desktop and partly in the cloud. It's sort of a hybrid. And this is supposed to solve a lot of the problems we've all been complaining about for several years now, which is the instability of design space. I'm sure if you use design space enough, you've run into problems with it just freezing up or the design, uh, goes away or all kinds of issues occur currently. Sometimes it just runs really slow. Yeah, so the idea here is that when they get it mostly out of the cloud and mostly onto your desktop, it will run a lot smoother and a lot faster. And then they say it's gonna go out and check the internet or use the internet to go out and check things like if you have an access subscription, if you're buying things, of course, it needs to go out to the internet to make those purchases and so on and so forth. So we'll see how well it works, but they say this will be completed in the early part of the new year 2020. So without further ado, I want to go ahead and start talking about these tips that I'm going to show you in Cricut Design Space. But before I do, it's nighttime. I'm going to have myself a little glass of wine here. I would um, invite you to do the same, or if you don't like wine, Get yourself some other liquid beverage, maybe coffee or some nice um, hot cocoa, whatever it is you prefer. And let's go on over to our computers and see how it works. Ah, that's good after a long day. All right, well, let's go on and check it out. Okay, so here we are in the Design Space Canvas work area, and I wanted to show you a few things about something that I believe is not used nearly enough, and that is templates. If you go over here, there is a templates category, and if you click on it, you're going to see all sorts of options. And the one I'm going to show you first is called Basic Canvas. It's always over here, it's got a pink, triangle, circle, and square. So if you click on that, it's going to by default always put a square in and it says at the top, templates are for reference only and will not be saved with your project. That's perfectly fine, but it is good to know. All right, so right now you see a square here. And what you can do is change the size of this square. By clicking over down here in the basic canvas, shape option, you're going to get a lot of different things up here at the top. So what I like to do is set my work area. And as we know, currently you can cut a max of 11 and a half inches on your mat. And it's always tricky to know how big that is when you're designing in, in it and you're using big shapes. So this is one great way to make sure that whatever you're putting in here, whether it be something you're designing yourself or something you're bringing in is not going to be too large. So just pick the rectangle square, that's what's going to default. And one of the options also that default is fill to 12 by 12 cutting mat. You can click on that and you can see that you can also do a fit to 12 by 24 mat. But most of us, of course, use the 12 by 12 mat and you can see here that this actually is 11 and a half inches. 
Now, if you want to work in this space, it can be kind of hard to see this, so it's really easy to change the color without affecting the rest of the mat that you're working with or the canvas. So the way that you do that is just click on this color up here. It always looks like this, like it's not an option, but guess what? If you click on it, you do get options. So let's say we want to use a light yellow. Notice that now only your design area is yellow. This is very handy for working in. Now, this can be kind of busy. You have the quarter inch squares and of course because they're quarter inches it, they will be four squares by wide by four squares long or tall that makes an inch square now if you want to see a different version of this grid you can do so really easily by going up here in this corner once again it is not obvious that there's anything here that you can use so again this is something i think a lot of people miss but if you just click on it once it's going to toggle all those quarter inch lines and now all you have are one inch lines. If you toggle again, now you have no lines whatsoever. You always keep your, your rulers up here, but now you don't have any lines to, to uh, fool with. If you click again, you're back to that uh, beginning option. So there are three toggles you can choose from and these are the only uh, matte grid uh, settings you have whether you use it clicking this way or what most people are aware of if they're even aware they can change this at all you would go into the settings and that is up here in this uh, what I call the pancake shape and then you go to settings and here you have the full grid partial grid or no grid it's the same thing that I just showed you toggling off. By the way, if you're interested in changing it to metric, this is where you would do that. And here, saving for offline, you now have the option for cloud and computer, which I would recommend because then if you can't get to the cloud, you still have your designs available. So there you go. Quick and easy tip right there for you. All right, so now if you wanna get rid of this, it's really easy. You just have to click down to basic canvas again there and you can do it one of three ways. You can hit the eyeball and it'll be gone. You can hit this delete key and it will be gone completely. You see now it says blank canvas. Another way to do it is just hit your delete key on your uh, keyboard. All three ways will make that, that particular template go away. So let's talk about another template use, which I think is great. It's not one of the built-in templates that I'm going to show you, but let's say you want to design a card, and I do this all the time, guys. It saves me so much grief because I know exactly what I'm going to get when I'm done. So to do this, I'm going to hit Shapes and a square. It's going to insert a square, and I'm going to click off the lock key so that I can change the dimensions to anything that I want. And I want this to represent an A2 size card, so it's going to be 4.25 inches wide and 5.5 and inches tall. That is the perfect A2 size card base when it's folded in half. I'm going to change this color back to that light yellow. I guess I kind of like that color. It seems like neutral doesn't hurt my eyes. So anyway, I will use that, and if you want to, you can uh, use the enlarge or the zoom here to make this a little bit bigger and close up. Now let's say I want a mat, and for most of my cards I do have a mat, but rather than guess how that mat's going to look and what it leaves me for space to work in, I'm going to change this to the size of the mat by first unclicking that lock again, and then going here and making this uh, four inches wide by five and a quarter inches tall. And in this case, I'm going to make it, let's say gold. And now I can put it right on top there and I know exactly how it's going to look. In fact, I can even center this perfectly by just dragging my left mouse key around the design, going to a line and choosing the center. Now it is exactly centered on my card, the same way I want it to be when I'm uh, actually putting the card together. So now I want a design on this. So let's pick an image and let's look down. This little bird's awfully cute. Let's insert him or her, whatever it is. Uh, it's way too big in this case, so I'm going to make this a lot smaller. So I'm going to 
make it down to five to begin with, and I'm going to make it even smaller than that. All right, there my little bird is. And now I can decide, do I want to put um, a sentiment on here and that sort of thing. But let's just talk about uh, the design I have at the moment. So now you see exactly how it's going to fit even on that mat and you don't have to guess how that looks. So I find this very, very effective for designing. Now, when you actually send this to cut, you probably don't want that card base shape, the five and a quarter by five and a half, the light yellow one to print. So all you have to do to, is to go down here and click off the eyeball. And that way, it's still going to cut your your mat if you want it. But if you didn't want to do that and you're going to do that yourself manually, you can also click that off. However, if you decide to change your mind and you think you're going to change the design or want to resize, by just clicking the eyeball again on and off, you can get those back without having to start from square one. So I'm going to, oops, sorry, align this again perfectly in the center. Okay, very good. Now here's another thing that you may not be aware. Let's pull this little bird off. Now we can see by looking at the layers panel here that there are a whole, whole bunch of layers. There's lots and lots of them here. So, you know, there's a couple ways you can attack this. You can certainly print, I'm sorry, cut all these different layers by hitting the make it. But there's another option you may not be aware of, and that is that you can print and cut this little fella. So before I show you that, I'm going to make a copy of him. I'm going to select him and then hit the duplicate because I need a copy of him for what I'm going to show you. But in this case, let's make him a print then cut image, and it's really easy to do. All of the layered images can be made print then cut. Some of them don't translate really well into print then cut, but a lot of them do. So let's take for example him, let's choose flatten down here, and you're going to see that he changed into a cut and print image, and he does look a little different from here, this is true. Um, the lines around his, his cheeks and things are not as pronounced, the layers aren't as pronounced, but that's okay. When you print and cut this guy, I think he's going to look pretty good. Um, you could also change colors of some of these layers. Let's see, we can unflatten just by doing that. Now he's back to all those layers. So let's take, for example, I want to make sure, mm, let's see, that's not it. Actually, this is the layer I want. Let's make him a little pronounced, a little more pronounced, I mean. We can hit the advanced key and make him a bit darker in color. And now he's got more pronounced differences between the layers here. Now you may or may not like that particular color of green. You can play around with it till you find the one you like, but let's just say it's that one for now. And actually I'm going to get rid of him since we've changed his color and duplicate him again. Okay, now we can again make him print then cut by hitting flatten. And you'll see he looks a bit better with better layers and color differentiation. So just change the colors of the layers and get it to the point you like, and uh, you can make this a really nice print thin cut. Now, the reason I kept the full layered up version of him is because I want to try to um, create just the hat, for example, and use that as a print thin cut too, and that way when it cuts out, I can put pop dots behind here and make his hat be layered and higher, so you can add some dimension to your print thin cuts so they're not quite as flat and plain. So here we go. Um, I know that really all I need are the hat images. So I'm going to start shutting off everything except the hat images or hat related images. Okay, there's my hat. And it's only these three pieces. The little dots, 
Uh -huh. And the little pom-poms at the ends. So what I can do with this is also select the whole thing and hit flatten. And now that's a print and cut too. So you see when we print and cut this, I can put them on little pop dots and create a nice cute little hat that stands out. Uh, so that's a great example of what you can do with print and cut to make it a little bit more dimensional and a little bit more interesting, but also save yourself a lot of time by not having to mess with all those layers. So I hope you like that a little tip. Let me delete all this stuff so I can show you some more things. All right, so let's talk about images and how we can find them a little easier. Let's go to the images option. And as we know, there are thousands and thousands of images in Design Space, so it's hard to know which ones you want sometimes. But then there is also the uh, additional confusion of things that show up that are paid for, not paid for, part of access, not part of access. I mean, you are getting everything that is available, no matter what, pay or not, when you just go to the search screen here like this. So let's uh, try searching for Elmo. And I'll show you what I mean. So here, when I ask for Elmo, I'm getting all kinds of shapes that I would have to purchase because they're not part of Access. This is a licensed character, and so they aren't part of the Access subscription. However, I own at least one Sesame Street cartridge and, you know, it might be hard to know which ones do I want to use if I'm not going to pay for it. So you can scroll through them all, certainly, but you can also use your filters over here. So if you would choose my images, it's going to get rid of all the ones that are pay for. Uh, that you have to pay for. So now I only see my Elmo images that I actually own. And so if I don't want to buy anything else and I'm going to try to make it work with what I own, this is a great way to just see that. Let's try something else, um, something more generic. Let's say house. And we're going to clear the filter, by the way, before I start this. Okay, so now I'm seeing a lot of the access. Well, believe me, there are definitely things in here that I don't own and would have to purchase. It's just hard to see because there are a billion, it seems like, designs of houses here. So what I'm going to do is hit the filter and choose uh, free. Let's see if there's anything free. Look at that. Now, these are also Cricut Access designs and I uh, subscribe to Access which by the way, there's a link in my video description for that if you're interested in it. It's a really good deal, I think. Um, and it's so much better than when we used to have to buy cartridges, so much better. But in any case, um, these are being offered free by Cricut Access right now. Now they may be only available for a short time. Usually it's related to the season or something like that, but these are all free whether or not you have access. Even though it says A, because it says free, it's going to be free to you whether you, you use or subscribe to Access. But let's say that in addition to free, I want to know my images. Actually, let me change that to purchased. So now these will be the purchased and free. And you can see now I've got purchased under those that I have purchased in cartridges or electronic or digital sets. So I have quite a few things that I've purchased once I choose that along with free. Now I can also choose Cricut Access and now I'm going to get everything under the sun in Cricut Access as well as what I've purchased and what is free. So it expands my choices even more. Now if you ha also have uploaded, let's clear the filters. I do not have any house uploaded, I don't think. Well, actually, it since I cleared the filter, it's looking at all of my uh, uploaded images. So this is kind of handy because it shows you everything you've uploaded to Cricut Design Space. So if you're in the middle of something, you're like, I know I had that certain 
image set. Why don't I go ahead and add that? Well, that's a quick and easy way to get there. So um, let's go back again and use house. And we have the filter on for my images, but now let's also choose 3D images or 3D objects. So if you know you want to make a physical little house, then you can filter further and quickly find those things that are 3D. So I think that's also great to know. So just experiment a little bit with your filters. I think you will find you will save yourself some time and you'll get to exactly what you're looking for uh, much easier if you learn how to use your filters. All right, guys, I think I've covered enough for one evening. Uh, I can come back if you guys want me to and show you more about Print and Cut and actually do a few of those with you and cut some layers to go on top of the Print and Cuts and show you how that can really add a lot to those flat designs. But if you want to see that, please let me know. I will uh, take that into consideration as I look at what videos to do next. All right, guys, I hope you've taken a sip of wine or coffee or chocolate or whatever you're doing tonight. Thanks very much for joining me. I will see you soon. And again, please let me know what you're interested in seeing next. Cheers. I invite you to keep the fun going and choose one of these other videos that I've put up on the screen. If you like this video, I think you might enjoy these as well. Thanks again so much, and I'll see you soon.